Squid Game, there's a chance that you've probably heard of it by now. It's become an international hit for Netflix. Taking a look at some of these numbers, data from Parrot Analytics shared with us. Demand for this series, it has grown about 500% since the launch of the show. And take a look at Netflix's stock because that has also been soaring on the heels of the popularity of this game. Shares hitting an all-time high yesterday, just above $640 a share. So let's talk about more about this with Wade Payson Denny. He's Parrot Analytics Press Insights Analyst. Wade, it's good to see you. The surging popularity of Squid Game. We were talking about it last night in our production meeting again this morning. Have you seen anything like it just in terms of the skyrocketing popularity? I mentioned that 500% number and also the fact that the popularity has actually increased every single day since its initial debut. I honestly have not. It's it's. I think Adam called it a ginormous wow, and uh, yeah, that's. I would certainly agree there. Um, to see the vast majority of binge release series, especially Netflix originals, they peak in demand about two, three, four days after being launched. There's typically a huge increase for that first weekend of availability. Everyone watches. Everyone tweets and talks about it with their friends. Um, but then it trails off, you know, consumers' attention drifts elsewhere. But for Squid Game, we have, yeah, like you said, we've seen it grow every single day. I mean, I, I've been, it's been the first thing I check every morning at work, and I keep expecting it to kind of start to trail off, but it it just doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see how high it can go. Got to ask you about what this means for streaming and Netflix. But before I go there, I've not seen the show yet. I know the dystopian, you know, what, what it's supposed to be about. Why is it called Squid Game? Is that a lost in translation thing? Or I don't want to do a spoiler, but do we know why they call it Squid Game? Um, yeah, I actually haven't seen it either. I've been binging Peaky Blinders. So once I finish that, I'll, I'll Love suddenly Peaky be Blinders. Oh, my God, that's so good. <laughs> Phenomenal show, but um, but apparently I think it is it is like a, a, a children's game played by uh, that's popular in South Korea. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's why I got the title. Having a show like Squid Game, when you take a look at the fact that it's from overseas, we talk about the increasing popularity of international shows. What do you think it does for the for the other international series that are out there? Well, are we seeing more eyeballs going to shows like that? Absolutely, um, especially for similar series. So with we've our data has shown that the Squid Game viewers are having a lot of affinity for one show in particular. It's called Alice in Borderland. It is a Japanese dystopian thriller, kind of similar concept, similar theme. And that has gone up in global demand about 170% since September 17th when Squid Game was launched. So it is certainly a rising tide for other Netflix hits. Um, and look, this is just a huge, this really just lends credence to Netflix's international strategy. They, you know, they just in the last month or in September alone, they had La Casa de Papel, huge mega hit from Spain. That was number one in the in the world um, after it launched Sex Education, which actually launched the same day as Squid Game on the 17th. Uh, that quickly became number one worldwide. But of course, both of those started to trail off and once the demand for Squid Game uh, started to grow. What does this do? We we always cover the mega contracts when Netflix is spending millions upon millions of dollars for a show. Squid Game comes in kind of cheap, low production cost, great. I mean, Hollywood, Netflix, they got to love that, right? What does it do for future contracts and people who are hoping to get big bucks? Um, yeah, no, I think it's, uh, well, it's certainly great for the, the Squid Game creator. Um, I don't think anyone saw this, this uh, blowing up as much as it did. But um, yeah, like you, you absolutely nailed it as far as like cost is, is the huge win here um, because, you know, you see that like the witch, for example, the witcher and stranger things like those are still the peak of those still a lot bigger than squid game so far, but those shows cost so much more than squid game. So the return for an international hit like this um, is huge. And I think you'll see Netflix probably promoting a lot more non-English, um, yeah, non-American non titles moving forward. Wait, when it comes to the perfect timing that this is potentially for Netflix, because we know the company has been struggling with subscriber growth, they cited that in their last couple of quarters. Is this something that you think could potentially turn around that tide here for Netflix? 
I think it could. So actually demand for original content is the key leading indicator of subscriber growth. So we have seen we have seen the demand share for Netflix steadily shrink every quarter for the last two years, basically since Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus launched, and the market has just gotten more set more uh, competitive. Um, but yeah, you know the, the 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 overall demand I think will continue to grow for Netflix, and I think that this will be great for them, um, especially yeah you know they've got their earnings coming up in less than two weeks. And I, I think we all expect the first thing for them to talk about is uh, Squid Game numbers. Uh, does this kind of stuff drive people to cut the cord? We had in our two and two stock, we talked about Roku, which is now saying in places like the UK, people stream more TV content than they do traditional pay TV. Um, does this drive the cord cutting or do people still maintain the two and two, as you might say here in the States, pay TV, traditional and streaming? Um, I think I, I think that it just kind of depends on the individual, but um, I think yeah, I think long term it certainly is going to drive uh, people to cut the cord. If if the most popular shows, if everyone's talking about something that's on Netflix and you or only have cable, then like you're going to be more likely to to move over there and want to watch it. So yeah, no, I, I think the the more hit uh, streaming shows there are, the worse off the cable uh, bundles are going to be.